Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you know, I sat here and I listened to the member from Mikusov. Something must be very, very wrong. And I can only... First of all, Mr. Speaker, he believes that I got annoyed. I'll get annoyed. So he tries to make me annoyed. I'm not annoyed. I'm passionate. I believe what I see. You think you can ever get... You think you can ever get me annoyed? Never. I wouldn't try that. I wouldn't try that. But I never said that. You are the one who said, John, get me angry. You're not getting me angry. You're not getting me angry. I'm not angry. When anything I say is deliberate. I'm not angry. I'm deliberate. I'm not angry. Yes. I'm deliberate. Anything I say, I'm deliberate. And the problem, and the problem is that what you expect will not happen. That's up to you to find out. Mr. Speaker, the only country in the world, the only country in the world, Mr. Speaker, that is not being affected by what's happening now. There is no country in the world, Mr. Speaker. And the members of the opposition, they continue to peddle these lies about the cost of food. Every country is suffering from imported inflation. From events that little islands like ours have absolutely no control over. It is arguably one of the most difficult times to run countries this, during this time, Mr. Speaker. Plus, plus, that these factors seem to be piling. Ukraine, then Palestine and, and, and Israel, now the problem in the, the, the Panama Canal, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me give you a few examples, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this member for Mikusov has not come up with one workable solution as to how to solve the price of imported goods in this country. Not one workable solution. But what he's not saying is that we've removed VAT on building materials. What he's not saying is remove VAT on equipment, on medical equipment. What he's not saying, Mr. Speaker, is that we have zero rated many items and we are in the process of continuing the debate on the zero rating and the, and the exempt goods as far as VAT is concerned, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, the member is a man of plans. All what he knows is plans. Rendering. Plans and renderings. There is no tangible proof of anything he did in this country. Wow. What he says is that COVID. Wow. There are, there are, he spoke about St. Vincent, Mr. Speaker. Wow. I was in Grenada a few months ago. I saw hotels that were built between 2019 and 2021. Grenada had COVID. Grenada had COVID, Mr. Speaker. I saw hotels that were built between 2021. I saw hotels that, that were built when the elections, the elections in Lucia were held in 20, 2016, when they won, in 2016. I saw evidence of hotels starting in 2017 and ending in 2019 because of COVID. And after that, they stopped and started again. I saw nothing of that nature in St. Lucia. During COVID, Mr. Speaker, this government got $302 million worth of concessionary finance during COVID. $302 million of concessionary finance. They only spent $7 million for import, import support. And that $7 million came from the National Insurance Scheme. All the import support that came, came from national insurance. This government had absolutely no reserves to give anybody in, any income support. Countries like Grenada had reserves from the Treasury that they paid for import support. We, in 2019, when COVID struck, this country had absolutely no reserves. The, 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 the primary account and the current account had gone into, soap, into deficit already. And when inherited 
from the Minister of Finance, it was in surplus. He inherited a surplus, and the figures can show. But I, and he continues with that lie, there was a primary surplus in 2016. There was a primary surplus. There was a primary surplus in 2016. And when you gave it to us, when you gave it to us, you gave it to us in a primary deficit. That's what you gave. After you'd borrowed $302 million from concession. Member for Mikusov. Mr. Speaker, there's a fundamental difference between a primary surplus and having reserves. Two completely different things whatsoever. <laughs> when we came into the government in 2016, there was zero reserves. In fact, that's why the famous statement came, something went wrong. A primary surplus has nothing to do with the reserves of a country. And the member ought to know better. In fact, so I just want to say that he's misleading the House. When we came into government in 2016, zero reserves. In fact, we were building up reserves for this country. And we used everything of the reserves when COVID came. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, only $7 million worth of income support were given to the people of this country during COVID. $7 million. Only, and, that, and that money came from, from the National Insurance Scheme. That's where it came from, Mr. Speaker. It came from National Insurance Company. That's where it came from. Nothing came from the government's reserves. Nothing. We inherited a primary, a primary deficit. That's how you manage a country. That's how you manage a country. On, on a primary deficit. And this year, there were primary surpluses. That's how. That's, that's what we found. That's what we found from you. When he left, when the member for for Vufort South left it, there were primary surpluses. The Prime Minister Prices, you understand? But you know, the member for for, for Microsoft just stands up and says anything. And when when, when the time comes, he, he goes into into a a, a, a pitiful eh, hey, the poor people of this country, you said they should flog their party supporters. What is more racist? What is more Jim Crow than saying they should flog people? You stood up, you and you are on record as saying people should be flogged because they are flogged publicly. And you believe you said it. And you believe that, that, that that's okay, you can say it because you are you. And if you like your solution, we'll, we'll forget you. You said the people, let us suppose you're referring only to members of the Labour Party. That's different. Forty-three percent of the people in this country always vote for the Labour Party. So you're saying that between forty and forty percent of people should be flogged, should be flogged, because you lost an election and the, and your election. You said they should be flogged. You're on record saying that, Mr. Speaker. Again, the member is misleading the House. If he's going to make a comment about me, put it in the right context. Nobody said anybody should be flogged because the, the, the way that they voted in the election. In fact, if I remember, there was a person from their party that said that people should be flogged on the, on the, on the square. Mr. Speaker, you know, that is the kind of thing that is not only misleading, but, but it's irritating, Mr. Speaker. The, the gentleman is on record as saying people that live should be flogged. Now he's saying he said it in context. You know, that's a context. Context, people were flogged. That's what you said. I'm talking about racism. People were flogged. Flogged. Flogging is a history of Jim Crow. And you're saying that all of us here, from, um, from the member from Miku, from the member from Miku North, all of us here should be flogged because we are supporters of the Labour Party. That's what you said. And you refuse. You refuse to say, I should have said so. No, you don't say it because you can say whatever you want. You're a product of Canada. <coughs> Speaking about health and security levy, Mr. Speaker, let me tell you what the health and security levy has done for this country. The health and security levy has caused the commencement of universal health care. You spoke about health insurance. All what you know is plans. Plans for health insurance for the five years, nothing. Then he speaks about he spent six million dollars on he spent six million dollars on sending people abroad for medical for medical um, medical purposes. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, 
six million dollars you spent. It has been a, let me tell you the recent record for the Ministry of Health about what he left for us. Say he spent six million dollars <coughs> on health. Mr. Speaker, do you know, do you know that in people who went abroad for medical assistance, the member from for Microsoft says he spent six million dollars in this week. In accordance with your request, the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Early submit statements to outstanding medical assistance for your attention. This statement covers the period commencing 2019 to 2023 and totals five million six hundred and forty two thousand four hundred and eighty three dollars and seventeen cents. But he said he spent six million dollars in one year. He spent six million dollars in one year. <laughs> he spent six million dollars in one year. But look at hey, this guy. Mr. Speaker, modern comedy. He spent six million dollars in one year, but he left with a debt of five million dollars for three years. Mr. Speaker, the member for the member for Mikusov speaks about the price of oil. He says oil is seventy-five cents or less per barrel. Mr. Speaker, the price of Brent crude today is eighty-one dollars and sixty-three cents. You know. He doesn't understand that anything he says can be fact-checked. And I have, I have warned, and I did that from since I was in opposition. I told the people of St. Lucia, when the then Prime Minister opens his mouth, fact-check him. Like yes, like me, like me, fact-check me. I want you to fact-check me. I've, I've challenged you to fact-check me. And you're talking about, 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 you speak about, if I worry about you. Mr. Speaker, he's speaking about he's speaking about cooking gas subsidy. As today, we are subsidizing cooking cooking gas by over twenty dollars per twenty two pound cylinder. When he was in government, the biggest subsidy they had for cooking gas was nine dollars. We are subsidizing by twenty dollars per twenty two pound cylinder of gas. We are subsidizing it. The people of this country, if it was not because of this government, would have been paying $20 more for a, a, a 22 pound cylinder of gas. And when he was there, he, the biggest, the largest subsidy was between $8 and $10. You understand, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, he is speaking about this, the gentleman is speaking about the Kerry Chris report is for 2022. How can you have a report for 2023 when 2023 are finished? How can you have a report? All reports are one year pass. Financial statements all are one year pass. So if I'm reporting, I've reported what I have. And, uh, and, and, and just as a matter of fact, carry Chris lowered, lowered the ratings in 2020, yeah? Just on, on the side, if you, if you forgot. Who was minister? Exactly, if, if you forgot. Because of what? Who was Mr. Speaker, <coughs> this member, Who was the member from Miku South, Who has an excuse fight? for everything, Mr. Speaker. He forgot, he forgets that tourism is seasonal. He forgot, he forgets completely tourism is seasonal. He forgets cruise ships that come in St. Lucia in September and August and June. The cruise season starts on in November and moves into December. That's when cruise tourism starts. But I want to tell you, on the day you have your proposed match, there'll be about possibly three and possibly six cruise liners in this country. Three or four. If you are a man that believes in the people, save the big taxi drivers and put a match on some other day. Yes, that's when they are driving them back to, to the cruise ship. You understand? If if you are a man, thank you. You see, so me, so me, 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 Mr. Speaker, you universal, universal healthcare, universal, Mr. Speaker, universal healthcare has started, Mr. Speaker. Now, Mr. Speaker, this the man from Microsoft is saying that we sold we sold the pot. 
and my colleague, the deputy, will speak about the pot, Mr. Speaker. But before he speaks about the pot, let me tell the people of St. Lucia how this member of the distorts the facts. He distorts it in a way, said if his Canadian accent, that if you do not listen carefully, you'll believe him. He said that we sold Slasbot. Let me tell you the revenue, and my colleague will, and my colleague will, will expand it, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in 2019, first of all, GPH is only going to handle the cruise part of the port. The cruise. In 2019, 82% of the revenue from the port came from cargo. 82%. Only 11% came from cruise. But he said that we saw SASPA operations. But he forgot, he forgot the instructions he gave to SASPA for the airports. HIA. For HIA. He forgot that. He forgot the instructions. He forgot. You see me, the speaker? What hurts me? Well, not that hurts me, you can't get use that word for him. What hurts me is that this member, Mr. Speaker, he's so self righteous. He made no mistakes. Everything his ministers did was right. He never said they did anything wrong. He never said, I will do things differently. Never. All what he knows is he's self-righteous, and he attacks everybody, and he believes he, he, his own truth. In 2022, 91% of Strasbourg's operations came from cargo. 4% came from cruise. But he says, we sold the pots. In 2023, 86% of Slasper's revenue came from cargo. 9% came from cruise. He said we sold the ports. What we're doing is the government has transitioned the cruise part of the port, the cruise part of the operation of Slasper to GPS, the cruise services, in exchange for investments, Mr. Speaker, and in exchange for taking the debt out <coughs> of Slasper. So what will happen? And Slasper has begun. Slasper has bought a new crane to expand the port operations, Mr. Speaker. Hopefully, we can expand it to some other destinations. That's, that's what it is. So what we've done, what the government has done, they've diversified, they've put the cruise part, only the cruise, into, into a company, only the cruiser company and and the revenue the revenue that's the revenue from the main revenue from the ports the main revenue from the port mr speaker comes from the cargo operations which are going to be modernized <coughs> which are going to be modernized on 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 the cruise mr speaker so certainly mr speaker this member the member of microsoft doesn't know about the seasonal nature of tourism Mr. Speaker, the member from Miku South speaks up, speaks about Grozile, speaks about the Grozile Highway. Mr. Speaker, the member from Viewford South was Prime Minister. We negotiated with the QATs. We negotiated with the QATs, Mr. Speaker for reconstruction of the Castries Grozile Highway. We negotiated with the member from Microsoft was, was, was a member for v South, was Prime Minister. We had a complete loan, a loan for the reconstruction of the Castries Grozile Highway together with the roads, the subsidiary roads, Mr. Speaker. The tender for that happened sometime in April or May. The member for, for Viewford South, with his level of transparency, he thought that the results of him attend the board, there was too much of a vast difference between the first tender, the highest tender, and the lowest tender. He, he instructed that it be retendered. And the retender happened on the 6th of June. When they won the election, Mr. Speaker, the retender, incidentally, was on the 6th of June. That's when the, the, the tender's board was supposed to meet. But you know what happened on the 6th of June. When they won the election, Mr. Speaker, the curators call them and beg them, yeah. literally beg them to continue the highway. They literally beg them to continue the highway, Mr. Speaker. Also, and I want the farmers, because he spoke about bananas, Mr. Speaker. There was also, there was also, Mr. Speaker, there was also uh, 
the plan to develop the feeder roads in the same Miko North, Miko North and Viewfort North. The member from, Mik from Viewfort South can testify to that, that these loans were signed and ready to go when they came into government in June. They canceled it. The Kuwaitis <coughs> called me because they thought in St. Lucia there was transition. They followed transition. They called me and said to me, they said to me, Minister, what is happening to these roads? I said to him, in our system, when you're out, when you out, you out, and there is no contact for you, Mr. Speaker. And they could not believe, they could not believe that a loan that had been completed, that had been signed, Mr. Speaker, the government would just abandon it. So I want to tell the people of Grosley, that any time they get stuck on the grocery highway, they must blame the member from Microsoft. Any time they get stuck on the grocery highway, they must blame the member from Microsoft. Because he was the one who cancelled the loan for the construction of the highway. And the records are there. And let's speak about records. These records are available. We can show it. He cancelled the loan, Mr. Speaker. He cancelled the loan. And the Kuwaitis, the Kuwaitis, the Kuwaitis, Mr. Speaker, they begged the government not, not to come, not to complete, not to ban, not to stop that construction, Mr. Speaker. But you know, again, instead of he just, instead of he just says to himself, I made, um, I made, a, I made an error. But read it out, read it out, like, like, like a little child is father take his toys. That's how he behaves. Because he doesn't admit, admit, and listen to me, we, there was an error in judgment, I thought we, 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 we had done something different. Say that. Just say it. We, we may understand. Because you in government, we took responsibility. We said that we are not, after we got the report from the committee, we said we are not going your way in St. Jude, we are going the way of continuing work on the existing buildings. We took responsibility for our actions. We said, we are not continuing on your billion dollar airport, we are going to redo the terminal. We took responsibility for our actions. We took responsibility. We said, we took decisions and we took responsibility. But you refuse to take any responsibility for the decisions that you make. And you want people to get your vote back for you. No responsibility. He did everything right. Everybody was wrong. 15-2 is no margin. Nothing was wrong. You were perfect. And you lost the election because of what reason. You were perfect. I've heard the member from v say he, can, he would do certain things differently. But not, not you. You're right. You're self-righteous, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, then finally, he speaks about covid me tell me the member from Microsoft can bring back COVID deaths in 2023 to score points? To score points? You bring back COVID deaths? I mean, where, where? The member from Microsoft knows very well the deadly Delta variant was not in government when, was not there when he was in government. But we will not bring that back. That's a fact. The Delta variant came in the year 2021 to 2022. That's when it came. But you want to argue about that? You want to make a first de de um, Delta death, I'm Delta, um, uh, de um, death from COVID? Just where, where are we? Where are we? Where are we in the country? You want to go back to that, Mr. Speaker? Then you speak about. $1,500, I said, what I said, I'm going to repeat, and you want to pay tips, you can pay tips. What I said, and I repeat it, what I said, was you are given $500 from NIC. If we were in government, if we were in government at the time, we would have given $1,500, and I stand by it. And I'm saying to you right now, we are giving the public of St. Lucia, for the Ministry of Equity, those who deserve it, 5,000 of them are going to get $1,500 each. And that is a fact. That is not a plan.
That's not something we would do. That's not something we try and do. That's not something you write on a piece of paper. That's not something a plan. Oh, we would have done that. We would have done that. We are doing it. We are doing it, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we are doing it. It is not 500 again. Not 500. Mr. Speaker, you know, Mr. Speaker, <coughs> then finally, what was. What, the one you, the one you what was even more surprising, Mr. Speaker? And I don't want to speak up. I don't want to say it. I'm not going to say it. Because I have a responsibility. Because my job, our jobs here are temporary jobs. All of us will not be held all, every, every time we live. We have a responsibility to the country, Mr. Speaker. I will not speak about Bank of St. Lucia. I will never do what he did. Never. Because, and the man for, for Shozel should stand up and disassociate himself from these statements, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. But I, well, I won't get involved in that. But you know, but that is the responsibility. What he believes is you must burn the house to kill a rat. It's a scorched off policy. You go and you say all what you can say. Mash it up just because you're not in power and hopefully you can rebuild it. That's not how we behave in opposition. No, no, we were tough. We were tough on facts. We, we, we weren't reckless. We never spoke about war. We never spoke about flogging people. We never spoke about, about, we never spoke about, about people's parts. People's, we never called people mongrels, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, and I reiterate, Mr. Speaker, that the member from Mikosov, any time he opens his mouth, I want to tell the public senator to fact check him. In the moment, not because he just says things, just twenty percent, forty percent, ninety percent, all kinds of things. We want four thousand five hundred, all kinds of things, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, the facts are with us, and I want to thank the people of Saint Lucia. We are going to be having discussions because you know the supermarket structure in Saint Lucia, is such not because of the government. The supermarket is run basically by one player. That's a fact. It's run largely by one player. What we are doing, Mr. Speaker, we are, it's a fact. What we're doing is that we are holding, we are going to hold some discussions so we can see how we can elevate the situation. Because <coughs> we understand the price of goods are going up. We understand it. We talk about subsidizing flour. You are the first guy, the member of Microsoft. He is, he's on record as saying, this government has an idea, by reducing the price of flour and sugar, they help the poor. He was, that's, that's what he said, you know. He said that on a, on a program. He said our idea of helping the poor is to subsidize rice, flour and sugar. He forgot that. He said so on a program. He was criticizing us for saying that. Now you want to and now you want to say, we must do it after we do it already. But that's, that is a double standard. And that's why you must fact check him. You must fact check him, Mr. Speaker. Because he says things on one side and he, he, he achieves he, in his self-righteous posture and goes into helping the poor. My colleagues spoke about helping the poor. You call the poor medicants. You call them medicants. You said, yes. You said you were the one who said our patrimony is, uh, is in our credit card. And, uh, you, and you spoke about, you speaking about the poor? Mr. Speaker, on a point of order, again, I'm going to ask the member to withdraw that, withdraw that statement. I have never referred to people, poor people as being mannequins. I mean, I can sit here and, and, and allow some of the other stuff to take place. You said... But the fact is, I have never once... You know you were medicants? Huh? You didn't know was a medicant? Not to describe a poor person. What, what are you describing? Who are you describing? Uh, your business. Who are you describing? I'm going to tell you. Exactly. You tell me. Who are you're the one quoting you me. You said... You're the one quoting me. You said... I never that said... the medicants... And you also said that, Mr. that, Mr. that the lady who Speaker, bought I'm, the I'm land... I'm saying her point. The lady who bought the land... That unless the member had any proof... The lady who bought the land... I'm asking him to withdraw this. The lady who bought the land as at Banan, you said she was an, an, a non-entity. Yes. You didn't say that either. This is why she's a non-entity. Exactly. Uh, you understand? What, what you do is that you just, when you got, when you caught, instead of getting about listen to me, that is something I should this have is said. Member yes, 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 Mr. Speaker, again, the member is misleading us. 
Okay, if he wants to remember when I spoke about mendicants, I said that he is making the people in this country mendicants and his policies. And with the lady who bought the property, but that she was a non-entity as a business person. And we've clarified that. But if you want to continue to do and make those <coughs> kind of things, but I'm going to, from now on, Mr. Speaker, every single time that there's a misquote like him, I'm going to stand up and ask for that statement to be withdrawn because it's not a factually correct statement. I never called people mendicants. And I made reference to the young lady as being a non-entity from a business perspective. And instead of being more concerned as to why she bought the land and how she bought the land, he wants to detract and, 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 and speak about something completely superficial. Mr. Speaker, you, you, see, you see what he calls superficial? A young person going to business. That's what he calls superficial. It's a young person going to business because it's superficial. But that's the same member. That's the same member who can try to justify giving a thousand acres of land to one man based on plans, on renderings. That's the same member who said he was not building a, a set of islands. He went to the state and he said, I've got two billion dollars worth of investment. The girl says two billion. He said, yeah, two billion. So a friend of mine says two billion US. He said, yes, two billion US. Deny. Are you saying that? You said it. I'm repeating you. You understand? I'm repeating you, Mr. Speaker. I'm repeating you. Mr. Speaker, but you know, that the delusion that he's suffering from. The delusion that he's suffering from, Mr. Speaker. But we are focused. So that will not take us off focus, Mr. Speaker. So the value added tax from barrels is to assist the people of this country. And I am saying that we are going to continue, Mr. Speaker, to continue the policies that benefit the people of this country. And we will not be distracted by people who do not understand that the people of St. Lucia took a decision. I thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I thank you very much.